I'm Jesse Houghton. I am a product manager on Visual Studio, and I'm excited to continue working on the beginner series for Visual Studio. So we've covered install. We've covered a quick, brief tour. Let's do kind of as many productivity tips I can for .NET as possible in the next 10-ish minutes. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're signed in. Signing in has tons of benefits. It allows you to uh, interact with us super easily on developer community using the send feedback button. It also gives you easier access to your services in Azure, as well as your GitHub services. And then it's also going to save your preferences between different installs of Visual Studio. So when you start up a new update or when you download the preview version, so you have all of the best uh, and interesting beta features to check out. Um, you'll get all of your customizations going along with you. I'll go ahead and demo uh, the all-in-one search. And so I'm clicking Control Q to pull that up. Clicking Control Search is going to bring up the feature search. And this is the ability to find and change all of the different items in my IDE. I can look for different customizations like font size, and speaking of customizations, we've added a bunch of new ones in Visual Studio 2022 related to tabs. So here I have all of my tabs sorted at the top, but I can place them on the right or left. That's what that looks like. I can also color the document tabs by different types of categories. So I'll select file extension. You'll notice how I get a little bit of coloring there. Additionally, I can edit things like if I want the active tab to be bolded or not. And these are all available under tools, options. And then if I look at like active tab, I can find the one that has to do with my project. All right. Some quick navigational tips. Uh, if I want to find all of the references to Cupcakes class in my project, I can use Shift. F12 or the context menu and find all of those references. And that shows up down here. Now I have it filtered to external sources, which I'll show why in a moment. And let's say that I wanted to get information about something that isn't in my code, but is in external code um, that I'm using. So let's say, for example, I wanted to go to the implementation of int. Well, if I go ahead and open external sources, I can see, let's go to the definition of int. I can see all of the places where I can understand more about this class and how I might use it in my code. Another great example of that is if I had a function in my distance class, all it did was call the dispose function. That's not something that's related to the code that I'm writing. That's not a definition that I'm using, but I can use source link to go and find the implementation of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at debugging and testing. If I go back and make sure I don't have any compilation errors, let me go ahead and build my solution. I am, oh, I realize I have an error in my cupcakes class. So let me go ahead and fix that. It uh, looks like I've got a typo in my price and my spell checker uh, in the editor. Let me know about that one. So let me go ahead and fix that. QB price. Awesome. And now I'm ready to start my debugger. Something super cool I want to share here is Hot Reload. We probably all heard the benefits of this before, but what it allows me to do is set an option, uh, this little fire icon, to Hot Reload on File Save. And whenever I make a change in my class here, I can see that change reflected on my website without having to restart my debugger and that whole debugging session over. So let me go ahead and quickly change the header here from Hello World to Cupcakes, because that's what the page is about. So I saved it. 
we saw the hot reload button go in and out, and I see that Cupcakes was updated without having to end my debugging session. Let's go ahead and do that now. And I am going to show some awesome ways that you can use the editor editing and refactoring capabilities of Visual Studio to learn about the latest C Sharp uh, updates. So if I go to my distance class, I have a class struct. Um, I have a struct called distance that I've created. And I can use the new uh, primary constructor in uh, C Sharp 12 um, to rewrite my code and learn a little bit more about that kind of syntax here. Um, I can also do the same thing in my date class, where I might not know about the other way to write switch expressions. So let's go ahead and use my quick info here to change that into a much easier to read and much modern style for C Sharp. Awesome. There are a ton of other icons that will appear here in this column here next to your line numbers. And so make sure to kind of pay attention to those. And you can learn a lot about different ways to update your code in the IDE. Next, let's take a look at some of the awesome things that come in the editor. I'll go ahead and hold Shift Alt and tab down through these items. And what this is allowing me to do is it's like one big cursor. So I can move this whole uh, expression over and uh, back. And if you're not familiar, this is like a C Sharp 11 feature of having this string literal that has all of the extra spacing and quoted text um, that's now supported with C Sharp 11. All right, so I'll go ahead and switch to Markdown. We have a Markdown editor available in Visual Studio now, and I can see and edit all of my Markdown files here. This is not just for your README, but if you want to have any other documentation that goes along in your repository, it's super nice to be able to have that Markdown render for you in Visual Studio. And another awesome feature that we worked on recently was giving you the ability to compare any two files from Solution Explorer. This was a highly requested item. And let's say that I want to see how the create page and the edit page differ. So I'll go ahead and hold control and select those two, right click and select compare file, compare selected. And this is going to bring up my diff side by side view um, where I can scroll through and see what are the commonalities and I can even make changes to my right side file so that I can update based off of what I'm learning from this comparison. The other thing that you might have seen as I've been going through this demo is that sometimes it can be hard when you're kind of deep into a function to understand exactly what your context is. So if you look at the top here, I've actually had sticky scroll enabled this whole time, and that allows me to quickly uh, understand what my scope is. And I can actually scope that up a couple uh, lines or down to make sure that I'm not losing any um, space in my editor. Um, and I can quickly get to the uh, different scopes that I might be in. So that customization setting uh, to have multiple lines show up in sticky scroll is going to be in uh, tools options, and you can search sticky scroll. Right, the last one on here that I wanted to cover was brace colorization. You might have noticed this as well. Really easy when you have a ton of contacts and a lot of scopes inside one another that the colors are really helpful to kind of identify which scope it is that I'm inside of. So you can also change the color of the braces as well. And then here, I'll go ahead and switch over to show a quick IntelliCode demo. And you'll notice that as I clicked Enter, I got an automatic gray text. And this is actually coming from the GitHub Copilot. And it's going to give me some good suggestions about things that I could put here based off of my comment. I'm also getting at the same time my IntelliCode suggestions, and the stars are actually the ones that it thinks are the most likely option for me to choose. Uh, and it's off and right. So let me go ahead and select that by clicking Tab, and then I'll create the rest of my ingredient list. Here, I'll just accept the rest of the gray text because 
uh, Copilot guessed exactly what it is that I wanted to write. And I've got a uh, alert here letting me know that I actually don't have this class enabled, but I can, or this class created. So I can go ahead and generate that class in a new file as simply as that. So this makes uh, kind of scaffolding your project super easy because uh, it allows you to make sure that you have all of the pieces that you need just to get something up and, and compiling right away. All right. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to cover was accessibility settings by using the control Q search like I did earlier. I'm going to search for high contrast mode, and that's one of the options that comes up here. This is going to take me to that page in tools options that allows me to see all of the options that I have to configure my environment. And the first option is the one I was looking for, which allows me to get a little bit more contrast between the foreground and the background of my screen. Another one that's pretty cool is the audio cues. So I'll go ahead and search audio. And this is going to enable a sound effect whenever I hit something in the code that I might need to be alerted to. And is super helpful for folks that might need that extra layer of indication that something's going on for them. The last one I want to show is uh, line spacing, which is also on this page. And that allows me to add a little bit more space above and below each of my lines so that I'm not overwhelmed by how much is on my page at a time. You'll also notice I can change many things in my display. There's that sticky scroll option I mentioned before. So you've got a ton of ability to customize your IDE to work well for you. That was searching, navigating, uh, testing, refactoring, and also accessibility and signing in. Tons of stuff in the IDE that helps make you more productive. Thanks for watching.